Hey there, 8th grade. In this next video, we're going to be focusing on line segments and looking at something known as the segment addition postulate. Before we get to that, we need to take a look at a little bit of notation when we're dealing with line segments. So first of all, when we're talking about measuring segments, if we have a line or a line segment, um, as you can see over here on the right, uh, and the segment here would be line segment AB. The distance between those two points A and B can be written as the length of segment AB. Remember from the last video that segment AB is written with an A and a B and just a bar drawn over those. Or it can be written as a, B. Notice there is a difference between this symbol and this symbol. The one on the left means line segment AB. The one on the right means the length or the measure of line segment AB. So if you're only talking about the measure, let's say, uh, well in this case, uh, line segment AB is four units, negative one to three, then you don't use the bar. Okay, to say AB equals 4 just means that line segment AB is 4 units. I also want to talk about congruent segments. In geometry, congruent means equal. So if the measure of line segment AB is equal to the measure of line segment CD, as you can see over here on the right, they're both 4 units, then we say the segments are congruent. And the way we write that is we say that line segment AB, so including the bar, is congruent to, and our symbol for congruent is an equal sign with that little swish over it, line segment CD. So notice again, this first statement says that the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. Uh, down here, we have to use the congruent symbol because we're talking about line segments. Line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. All right, so now we're going to get to the bulk of this video, which is the segment addition postulate. In geometry, anytime you hear the word postulate, uh, it's referring to a statement that we assume to be true, uh, but we can't really prove. It's kind of just a basic fact uh, in mathematics. Uh, we'll get to eventually some theorems in geometry, lots of theorems actually, and when we get a theorem, uh, we can actually prove a theorem, but postulates are just the basic uh, definitions that we take to be true. So the segment addition postulate says the following. It says that if A, B, and C are collinear points, meaning they're all on the same line, and B is between A and C, which you can see from this figure, it is, then the following must be true. The length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC is equal to the length of segment AC. Now that looks a little bit of complicated when you first glance at it, but here's all it's saying. It's saying that this length from here to here, that's the length of segment AB, plus this length from here to here, that's the length of segment BC is equal to the length from here to here, which is the full segment AC. Okay, that's all it's saying. Uh, the smaller segment plus the longer segment is equal to the whole uh, thing. That's the segment addition postulate. So, so we're going to apply that now to some examples. Uh, in examples one and two, we're using the diagram uh, line segment PR with the point Q in between. And number one says, if PQ equals 9, so this is 9 here, and QR equals 28, so this is 28 here, uh, find PR. So it wants us to find the length of the entire segment. Well, to do that, I would just take 9 plus 28, add those together, and I get 37. Okay, number two. This time, uh, let me erase what I've got here already. So this time, QR is equal to 17. 
PR is equal to 21, so that's the entire thing, and we're supposed to find PQ. Well, to do that, uh, I can take the entire segment, 21, and I can subtract that 17, and then I get an answer of 4. The other way we can solve uh, these problems involving the segment addition postulate is by using some algebra. And so that's what you'll see me doing more often than not uh, in uh, these examples in class. Um, notice that in number three, uh, we have some variables involved. So we're going to use our basic equation solving skills to help us with these problems. Uh, number three says that if line segment EG has a measure of 71, so that would be from here to here, the whole thing, find the value of X. Well. Line segment EG is made up of line segment EF, which measures 8X minus 17, and FG, which measures, measures 5X minus 3. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add those two smaller segments together, 8X minus 17 plus 5X minus 3, and I'm going to set that equal to 71. And now I can solve this multi-step equation by combining my like terms, so we have 8x and 5x, and that gives us 13x. And then we have negative 17 minus 3, which is negative 20. So we get 13x minus 20 equals 71. If I add 20 to both sides, I get 13x equals 91. And then dividing by 13 on both sides, I get x equals 7. All right, number four, uh, this time it tells us that line segment CE equals 7X plus 4. So that's the entire thing, that's 7X plus 4. Uh, we're supposed to find the value of X, and again, we're going to do that by adding X plus 3 and 8X minus 9. And we know those two segment measures added together will give us the entire segment, which is... 7x plus 4. So this is x plus 8x, 9x. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So on the left side, you get 9x minus 6. On the right side, that's 7x plus 4. Now we have variables on both sides, so I need to uh, subtract 7x from both sides to get 2x minus 6 equals 4. I can then add 6 to get 2x equals 10, and divide by 2 to get x equals 5. All right, number 5. This time I'm finding four different values. I'm finding x and then the measures of segments sk, ky, and sy. So let's label uh, what we're given. We know that segment sk is 13x minus 5. Segment KY is 2X plus 9. And then uh, segment SY, the entire thing, is 36 minus X. So let's set up our uh, equation first, just like for number 4. And the first thing we're going to do is find X. So this is 13X minus 5 plus 2X plus 9 equals... 36 minus x. 13x and 2x is 15x. Negative 5 and 9 is positive 4. And then on the other side, I get 36 minus x. So now I can combine uh, like terms from one side to the other. So add x on both sides. That gives me 16x plus 4 equals 36 and then subtract 4 to get 16x equals 32, and divide by 16, I get x equals 2. So that gives me one of my four answers. I know x is equal to 2. Now let's find the length of those three line segments it's asking for. Well, so now that we know that x is equal to 2, uh, we can just substitute 2 in for x into each of these little expressions, and that will give us the measures for each of our line segments. So sk we know is equal to 13x minus 5, 
Well, since x is 2, that's 13 times 2 minus 5. And so that's going to be equal to 21. Ky, that was equal to 2x plus 9. So now that's 2 times 2 plus 9. And that is 13. And then finally, SY, 36 minus X, so that's 36 minus 2, and that is equal to 34. There's one nice thing about geometry is you know your answers for at least the line segments here um, are never going to be negative. Okay, you can never have a line segment that measures a negative length. It's possible that x, the variable, could be negative, but for those last three answers, uh, s, k, k, y, and s, y, those can never be negative because they're referring to, referring to lengths of line segments. All right, uh, the next thing I want to talk about in this video is the midpoint of a segment. What do I mean by the mid midpoint of a segment? So the midpoint of a segment is a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, it divides the segment into two congruent segments. A line, a ray, which we'll talk a little bit more about in class, or a segment that intersects a segment at its midpoint is said to bisect the segment. So if you hear that word bisect, it means that one of those three figures, a line, a ray, or a segment, is intersecting another segment at its midpoint. And that line, ray, or segment is what's known as the segment bisector. So on the left here, I'm going to draw a diagram for you. So go ahead and copy this on your notes. Let's say you have line segment AC. So I'm going to put... A here and C here, okay? And then let's say <clears throat> that in the middle, we have a midpoint B. Now look back at your definition for midpoint. In order for a point to be a midpoint, uh, it must divide the segment into two congruent segments. So our symbols uh, for congruent uh, when we're using segments is just to make a dash or a, like this. So this just means that <clears throat> line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC, which means that B is the midpoint of that segment. Okay, so now I'm going to draw another line that passes through B, just like this. I'll call that line L. And now let's fill out this last bit here. Uh, so in this diagram, you can see that B is the midpoint of segment AC, and also that the line L is a segment bisector of line segment AC. So that's what I mean by that terminology. B is a point, the midpoint, and the line L is the segment bisector because it passes through at the midpoint. All right, so we'll apply that now to a couple more examples. Uh, number six, if H is the midpoint of segment GI, find GH. Well, the first thing I'll notice is I have variables here, so before I can find GH, I have to find X. And because they're telling us that H is the midpoint, we know that this segment GH and this segment HI are congruent, and so that means that 5X plus 2 the measure of segment GH has to be equal to 9X minus 10 because those are two congruent segments. So that's my equation, and now I'll solve that equation like normal. Uh, I can subtract 9X from both sides. That gives me negative 4X plus 2 equals negative 10. Then I can subtract 2 from both sides to get negative 4X equals negative 12 and then divide both sides by negative 4 to get x equals 3. Now, that didn't answer the question. They want us to find gh. So to find gh, which is 5x plus 2, I need to substitute 3 in 
4x. So gh is going to be equal to 17. All right, last example. G, if G is the midpoint of segment FH, and FH equals 6Y minus 2, find Y. Um, so for this one, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find uh, the actual length of segment FH. So that would be the whole thing. So they've told us again that G is the midpoint, so we know this segment here is congruent to this segment here. And so I can set again 4x plus 3 equal to 7x minus 12. And again, what that's going to do is just help me figure out what x is. So I subtract 7x from both sides, and I get negative 3x plus 3 equals negative 12. Subtract 3 from both sides, I get negative 3x equals negative 15, and then divide by negative 3, I get x equals 5. So that's only uh, helped me do a little bit of the problem. Now I know what x is. Well, let's think about how does that help us. Well, if we know what x is, then I can plug x into uh, this first expression, 4x plus 3, and that will at least tell me what fg measures. So fg is going to be 4 times 5 plus 3, and now that's going to be 23. So let's label that as 23 now. Well, we also know that segment GH is congruent to segment FG, so I can label that as well as 23. Well, if they're both 23, then I know by my segment addition postulate that 23 plus 23 is 46, and so segment FH measures 46. So that's going to help me now uh, to find Y, because it's telling me FH, the measure of FH is equal to 6Y minus 2, but I also know that the measure of FH is equal to 46. So what I can do is I can just take that 6Y minus 2 and set that equal to 46. And so now if I solve this equation with the Y, I get 6Y equals 48, and so therefore Y has to be 8. All right, if you had any questions over this video, make sure those are written down for the next time. And until I see you again, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people.